for 23 years this October, so I'm really old. But I started when I was about your age, I was 17 years old, I was a high school senior, and I was an intern for the high school, and they let me work at Wells Fargo Bank. So that was my first banking job. I liked it so much that I decided to stay, and now here I am 23 years later with a credit union. So do you guys know the difference between a credit union and a bank? Anybody? You can your money in a bank. So, but the difference between a credit union and a bank is that credit unions are not for profit, so that means the money that we make, we give it back to our members. Where banks are owned by stockholders, and it's like a business. They own the business, like Wells Fargo, B of A, Chase, all those are banks. So they're owned by stockholders, and they're the ones that reap the benefits of a financial institution or their organization. With a credit union, we're not-for-profit. The owners are members. So whoever has an account at a credit union, that's who owns the credit union. And they're the ones that reap the benefits of being with a credit union. So not only Altura, but you probably heard of Arrowhead Credit Union, Schools First. Those are all credit unions. So that's a little bit about myself. In banking, if you guys ever think, I would like to work at a bank. There's many different positions. Um, there's from tellers, so when you walk in and make deposits at the branches, those are tellers. And you have marketing, so if you have good marketing skills, if you do graphic design, you can work at a bank or a credit union because we have those departments. We have management, if you're good with math and numbers, we have uh, accounting departments, so it's not just working in a branch. There's many other jobs outside of what the branch people do such as IT, so IT would be inform information technology, so the people that help us fix the computers or any systems that go down, they help us with that. One, two, three, mark. Preparing for financial independence. So, how many of you guys graduate and go to college? Do you want to move away from home and have your own place? Okay. So a lot of you. That's a lot of hands. So there's a lot of responsibility that comes with that, and we're going to talk about that today because is that a good age? You guys are teens right now. You want to start preparing for that to be ready because it's not that easy. And then if you guys have any questions, just feel free to raise your hand and interrupt me. It's okay. So we're going to talk about managing money, preparing for future bills, opening and maintaining a checking and savings account, use credit wisely, and invest money. So money management. Where does money go? Where am I getting money? What are my wants versus needs? And this is important. Do you guys ever go to the store and say you just had your birthday and you collected money from your birthday and you go to the grocery store or the mall and you're like, let me just spend it. Oh wait, this is on sale. I didn't really want it or I didn't think of buying this, but it's on sale. This is where you have to say, do I really just want this item or do I need it? I need a new pair of shoes. Do I need a $180 pair of Jordans? Or can I go and spend my money and maybe use it wisely and spread the love a little bit, right? Welcome, guys. Throw a camera. Here's some goodies for you. So always question every purchase, okay? Have you guys heard of people say, don't go to the grocery store when you're hungry? You guys want to grab these chairs and then just pull them in the back. Um, and that's because when we are hungry and we go to the grocery store, we're going to want to buy all the snacks and everything that we don't really want or need. Or they'll say, okay, it's eight for a dollar, or eight for one, or two for one. We really don't need two, but we'll buy two just because we're going to sell it to us. And we'll talk about marketing techniques and, um, and what to look out for. So always question every purchase. Setting goals. So we need to have financial goals, short term, one year or less, mid term, one to five years, long term goals, five plus years. So just an example, what would be a short term goal? 
going to the movies. So in one year or less, you would say, okay, I'm going to save money because I want to go to the movies. What else would be a one year or less goal that you guys want to do in a year or less? Any ideas? Disneyland. So Disneyland's pretty expensive. You probably need $120 for your ticket, food, parking. So you have to start planning for that. So that's a good one. Midterm goal, one to five years. What would be a goal within one to five years that you guys would want to accomplish? College. College. That's a great one. So I need to find out the college I want to go to, what kind of scholarships are available? What kind of grades do I have to have? Am I going to have to live there, move in that area? If I am, how much money am I going to need? Am I going to drive, have a car? Do I need a bus pass? You need to start finding all this out and start saving. And then long-term goal, this is five plus years, and this would be buying a house, I've heard people say, finishing college, moving out from your parents' house, or whatever it is that you want to do in five years. If you didn't grab a pamphlet and a goodie, here's, they're right here. And be flexible. So we want goals that are specific, price, time, monthly savings. Anybody here is working some kind of job, babysitting, walking dogs, any jobs? Okay, when you start working, you don't want to get a paycheck and go cash it and have all the money in your pocket or have available all that money because what happens is that you guys will spend it all. Okay, you want to make sure that even if you don't have a bank account, if you don't have a bank account right now, you want to make sure that at home you're saving. Have three little lock boxes. Okay, this money right here that I'm using in this box, and I'll put a picture on it. This money is going to be because I want to go to Disneyland. And I'm going to save that money, and that money is going to be specifically for Disneyland. Then I'm going to have another box, OK? Well, when I graduate high school, I want to go on a trip. That's going to cost me like $2,000. That's that money. I'm going to put a picture on it. I'm not touching it. My third box is going to be probably college money or whatever else I want to use it for. And I specifically use that money for that. Do not touch it. So when you put your money all in one lump and you just have no plan, no goal for that money, that money will disappear and you would think, okay, what did I spend? Why did I buy that? I shouldn't have done that. You have to have a specific goal all the time for your money. So budgeting. Expenses should never be more than income. You guys do not have expenses unless any of you guys have to pay for your own cell phone bill. But if you guys are not working or have any kind of income, then you don't worry about that. But you guys do probably have some kind of money coming in because you guys have birthdays or Christmas and you probably get cash sometime in the year. Some of you guys get an allowance from your parents. When you do get money, have a plan for it. The minute you get that money, you say, okay, I'm not going to spend this money on XYZ. I need to save because prom is coming up, homecoming's coming up, my friends all want to go to this trip this summer, so I want to start saving it. And then put the other rest of your money on your spending limit for everyday spending. So what are your sources of income? So always, do you guys know what gross and net income is? Okay, your gross income is, say that I get a job and it's $10 an hour, and it's $10 an hour, I work 20 hours a week, so that's $200, right? That would be my gross income. But my net income is going to be after taxes, so I really don't get to take home $200. Uncle Sam is going to take some of that money from my taxes, which is Medicare, state tax, federal tax, and then I probably end up getting maybe about $160 from that $200. So that's going to be the difference between your gross and net. Avoid overestimating when you're budgeting because you don't want to think you're going to have $200, but in reality you're only going to have $160. So have a spending plan. Where is your money going each month? If you're making money on a monthly basis, if not, I and mean, if you get money once a year for Christmas, for your birthday, your parents give you some kind of allowance, where is that money going? Make changes if needed, and what expenses are necessary? And we see this a lot. So right now you don't have to worry about it because you guys are not working. But once you guys do have, you guys start, could start working at 16 years old, once you start working, you want to know where that money is going. We have people that say, I can't afford to spend, save any money a month. And we sit down and look at every transaction because we can see all their debit card transactions. And we find out that they spend about $200 a month at Starbucks. How many of you guys buy Starbucks? 
a few of you guys, right? So if you figure $5, about $5 each, if you're doing it three times a week, that's $15. Two weeks, it's, uh, it's 30, and a month is $60. What else can you do with $60, right? So preparing for future bills. Most all of you guys raised your hand and said, when I graduate high school, I want to move out. And I thought the same thing when I was 17 years old. I said, you know what, I'm going to move out once I graduate high school. I didn't think of all this other stuff, and I didn't know about all this other stuff. And I told my mom, I'm moving out. Well, I came into a big shock when I found out that most places where you rent, me and my friends wanted to rent, they wanted first last month and a security deposit for the, for the apartment. None of us had that money saved. When we called to turn on the utilities, the light, gas, we found out that because none of us had credit established, they wouldn't let us open those services unless we gave a $200 deposit per service. So they said, hey, you want electricity, that's fine, but you need to put a $200 deposit because you have no credit and we can't trust you. Um, so soon we found out that this was not easy for us to do. Uh, there's other household bills such as utilities, cable, internet, phone, garbage, gas, electric and water, cell phone, gym, whatever else you're going to spend, you have to budget for that and start saving for that if your thought is to be moving out when you graduate or you're 18. How many of you guys want to buy a car when you're 16, 17, 18? No one wants a car? Come on, guys. So yes. Car is important, right? Because we think freedom. So once you have a car, then guess what? You can go out and do your things, not have to worry about your parents or guardians giving you rides or having to take the bus and meet the hours for the bus to get to pick you up and drop you off. It's freedom to have a car. But also, it's a lot of responsibility aside from just driving. So you have to know how much you can really afford, okay? A lot of kids say, okay, I'm, I'm going to save $1,000 for my down payment, and I'm going to buy this $10,000 car. While this $10,000 car is a used car, you're going to need insurance. It's used, so it might go bad. It might break down. You might need new tires. You will need an oil changer, we so often. You'll need to put gas and insurance. These are all the things you guys need to factor in. When you are buying a car, I always say it's always best to save it cash and not have to finance the car. And be smart about it. I'm going to tell you guys a quick story that happened to my son that didn't listen to me. So I have a son. At that time, he was 18 years old. He worked at Jersey Mike's for an entire year, spent zero money on himself, saved every penny to buy the car that he wanted that cost $6,000 and something dollars, right? He saved it all. He called me one day and he says, Mom, I found the car that I want. I'm going to go see it. I found it on Craigslist. And I said, ah, be careful. Make sure the title is under the person's name. I gave him all the warning signs. Long story short, and I'll say, I'll say it's a long story, he says he did everything he was supposed to, goes to the DMV to register the car, and the police ends up showing up because it's a stolen car. So he gave his $6,500 to someone that had a stolen car and he bought it. He's lucky he didn't get arrested because he had the text messages and everything and you know the money that he pulled out and all that stuff, but you guys always have to be careful. You're never sure of buying something. If you think, you know, I'll tell you right now, teenagers, I was a teenager too, my mom couldn't tell me anything. I thought I knew everything, and I was right, and my son told me, I thought I knew that this was the right thing to do. I thought I knew it, and I got it, and I bought it, and I was proud of myself for doing it, and I didn't listen to you, mom. So if you guys, maybe your mom, your older siblings, your teachers, ask always somebody. If something doesn't feel right, or if you're gonna make a big decision of purchasing something large, ask someone for their advice. Someone that's older because they've been there and they've done it. So I'll tell you what, now my son will never buy anything without asking it for advice from someone else because he lost a whole year's worth of pay and he almost went to jail for buying a stolen car. So always, always question every purchase. Ask someone that is more experienced than you before making those large purchases. Remember, the more you borrow, so if you're going to take a loan, an auto loan out to buy a car, to buy anything, the more you borrow, the more interest you're going to pay. And interest is what the bank charges you. So if I go to a bank and say, I really need to borrow a credit card, I need $1,000. They're going to say, OK. Your credit is good, we're going to give you a credit card, but we're going to charge you 18% interest. That means the money they're going to make for letting me borrow that loan or that card, the credit card. 
So always try to buy it cash if you can, and if not, then you can go to a finance company such as a bank or a credit union. If you're going to buy it in payments, make payments on it, make a large down payment, so that way your interest rate is a little lower, and compare the financing deals. So always compare what you're buying, not only on a car, but you know, you guys are fortunate. You guys have your cell phone, you have Google, you can put in what you want to buy, and it gives you different prices on every place that they sell it. Back in my days, I had to go to each store and get the information and shop for the best. Always shop for the best, because I'll tell you, if you walk into, let's say, the mall, and you know the little carts in the middle of the mall, and they say, come here, come here, let me show you this shoe shiny thing, or let me show you this Sprint phone, and they make it sound really good, but do you guys think that it's in their best interest to sell you that item, or they really care about your interest? Who are they worried about? Themselves. Themselves. So if I'm worried about myself, and I'm trying to sell you this bag of chips, do I really care if it's going to work for you or not? I just want to make sure I make the sale, right? Mm -hmm. And that's how you guys always have to think. Salespeople need to keep their job. Um, either they're only getting paid commission, that means that if they don't sell something, they don't get paid, so they make zero money. Or they have a goal, and if they don't sell so many of these items, they will be fired. So their best interest is always going to be themselves. So always question every purchase, because as young adults, People think, uh, you know, they don't have life experience. They don't know, like my son. That man that sold him the car said, this is a young guy. He's not going to ask me questions. He's not even going to look at my D, and he didn't. And he was right. That man was right. My son was inexperienced, and he took advantage of that. We don't want you guys to go through anything, any of that. So you always question every purchase. Always ask people. And always ask questions. Don't ever sign anything without knowing what you're signing or asking someone else. So a checking and savings account is important to have because if we have cash in our pocket and we say, I don't want to open a checking or a savings account, if we lose that money. If our purse gets stolen, if we keep it at home and our house burns down or someone breaks in, are we going to get that money back? No, right? It's gone forever. No one's going to say, here, I'm sorry, here's your money back. No. If you have it at a bank or a credit union, it's insured. So that means if someone steals your money, if someone commits fraud on your account, the bank is going to give it back because your money is insured. Okay, so you, your money is always safe. Um, if you're under 18 years old, you can have a checking account as long as you're 12 years and older. You just need a parent or custodian to go onto the account with you. So definitely you guys can have an account and you can start budgeting and managing your money. Even if it's not a lot, even if you only get an allowance every six months or a birthday gift as cash, you guys can still have an account. So always know how much is in your account once you guys have a checking or a savings account because people do commit fraud and you want to be able to catch it and report it so you can get your money back. Um, we'll skip some of this because you guys are still too young for that. But every time you get a statement, once a month you'll get a statement on your balance, you want to check it and compare it to your notes and see, okay, I thought I had $150, I have written it down here, is that still in my account? And check the transactions against it. Okay. When a check bounces means, and we really don't, people now don't use checks as much anymore, but it's if you write a check and you didn't have the money in the account. So if I wrote a check for $100 and I only had $80 in my account, I give the check to you because I need to pay you. You go and deposit it into your bank account. My bank is going to bounce it and say, no, we can't take it because she doesn't have enough money. So then you get, then I get charged for bouncing a check. So ATM cards, um, our ATM cards, our debit cards, our own secure personal pins are supposed to be secure. We don't share this pin number with anybody because if anything happens, some our card is compromised, someone steals our card, we don't want anyone else to have that pin number. Memorize your pin, never share your card. And then credit cards, you guys know where credit cards are? Okay, credit cards is a pretty much a loan. So I can go to Macy's and say, can I have a Macy's credit card? That means I can shop at their store. I don't have to use my own money. If I get a gas card, same thing. If I get a regular credit card from anywhere, I can buy anything I want and not have to use my own money. But remember what we said about credit cards? They make interest, right? That's money they're going to charge us. So I'm going to tell you what happened to me 
when I was seven, 17, I worked at Wells Fargo. Then when I turned 18, once you're 18, you can have credit. And that means you can go and start applying for people to give you credit cards. Well, I went to Macy's, it used to be the Broadway, that's how old I am, but it was a Broadway and I walked in and the lady says, do you wanna apply for credit? And I said, what is that? And she says, well, we'll give you a credit card and whatever you're approved for, you can shop up to that amount and then you just make monthly payments. And I said, okay. So I had one shirt, gave it to the lady, and she runs my credit. She says, you're approved for $500. And I said, what? Does that mean I can go and buy stuff, like up to $500? And she says, yeah. So I'm like, hold on, I'll be right back. And I thought, this is like a shopping spree. So I went back into the store, and I spent all $500. I spent $500 on stuff that I didn't even need. Next month, I get the bill, and the bill says only $20. And I'm like, I could afford this. I'm working. $20 is nothing. I didn't know, and nobody told me that for that $500 worth of stuff, it was going to take me seven years to pay it off. And guess how much I ended up paying at the end of it? I bought $500 worth of stuff. It took me seven years. The interest rate was about 27%. How much do you guys think I really ended up paying back? Just throw a number. I, thank God it wasn't that much. Any other guesses? It was double that, so it was $1,500. So I paid $1,500 back to Macy's. It took me seven years to pay it. I bought $500 worth of clothes that in seven years, I don't even know, it was probably in the trash or at the Goodwill. I had nothing to show for and I paid them back $1,500. So it's good to have credit cards, why? Because say that I work far from where I live, so I have to drive to work. I can't take a bus, I need my car. If my car's four tires, they say you need four new tires and I don't have the cash to spend $700 on tires, I'm gonna use my credit card. Is that a wise thing to do? To use my credit card to buy tires for my car? Of course. Yes, because I need to get to work to make money. But was it wise for me to go to Macy's and buy $500 worth of clothes that I really didn't need? No. 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 Because I paid so much more and it, it shouldn't have been done. But no one at that age told me that it was wrong or right. So that's why I'm here today to tell you guys. Always question your purchase. Use your credit, but use it wisely and use it for things that you need. Because if we have bad credit, and we'll go over that right now. I think it's the next one. Um, I'll tell you right now, your credit history there's a report, and on this report, it will say the date your account was open, if you have late payments, so anything that's over 30 days late is gonna go on your credit report. If there's any collection accounts, that means anything that I stopped paying on and said, you know what, I'm just not gonna pay you, I can't afford it anymore, is gonna show my current amount owed, credit limits, debt-related lawsuits. If I stop paying on credit cards, they'll take me to court, and they'll start collecting my paycheck, my money in my bank account, and they'll just take it. Um, and any errors on there. So let's skip to, okay. So on the credit, if I want to buy a car, they're gonna check my credit. If I want to rent an apartment, my credit is gonna be checked. We have a member right now that has a job and can afford to pay rent at an apartment or a house but no one rents to her because she has really bad credit. So if I own an apartment building and someone comes to me and says, I want to rent your apartment, I'm going to run their credit because that's going to tell me if they pay their bills on time or not. And if they're not paying their bills on time, I don't, I'm not going to want to rent my apartment to them because it's a risk that they're not going to pay me. If you want to get a job, when I started working at Altura Credit Union and all the banks that I worked at, they checked my credit to make sure that I, I'm responsible, and that's really what it shows. So once you guys start es establishing credit, you don't let anyone borrow it. That means if someone says, hey, can you co-sign for me? Can you take a credit card under your name and can I borrow it? You don't let anyone borrow it. And you use it wisely. You never spend more than what you need to, and you only use it for emergencies. So the last part is investing. And a lot of people say, well, I'm too young. I was one of them. I started working, I told you guys, at Wells Fargo when I was 17. When I was 18, the person who handled investments said, Karina, you need to start putting money away for your retirement. 
And I thought, retire, man, I'm 18, is this guy crazy? Like, there's a whole lot of years before I retire. Well, I'll tell you, from 18, I'm 40 now, from 18 to 40, it went by really, really quick. And I thank him, he kept bugging me and bugging me, he says, just put $50 from your paycheck away for your future. And finally, he bugged me so much, and I said, okay, I'll sign up, take $50 from my paycheck, put it into my retirement. And I'm so happy that I did that. Because a lot of people say, have you guys heard the lottery right now? There's a lot of money, right? There's like billions of dollars. And that's chance. By chance, somebody will win. They say it's easier to be struck by lightning than to win the lottery. But you guys don't have to win the lottery to be wealthy when you're retired. You guys invest that money and start working now. My dad was older when he had me, and he was 75 still working. Why? Because he had to. He had no choice. He had to go sell at the swap meets. He had to go do whatever he had to do to make money because he was old and he had no retirement. And I would see how hard he worked and he couldn't work no more. He got dementia and you know, he couldn't work anymore. So I thought, geez, I don't, want my, I don't want me to be like my dad and working at 75, old, and not able to work, but I have to do it because I need to eat. So we're going to talk about investments. And there's different types of investments, but I want to show you guys this example. So when I started investing, I was 18 years old. And the blue shows if I started today at 18, right? The red shows if I would have said, huh, let me wait 10 more years and we'll see what happens. You start today investing $2,000 a year, 9% return. I know $2,000 a year right now sounds a lot to you guys, but when you guys are working and you say, I'm going to take $120 every month and put it away, or $150 every month and put it away, is not that much. And you start putting it away and putting it away, and you act like it doesn't exist. Once you guys are like me, I went to sleep one day, I was 18, I woke up and I'm 40, that quick. If I, the blue represents, if I start today, in 15 years, I would have a little over 50,000. But if I waited 15 years, and I said I'm only 18, I'll wait till I'm um, older, and waited 15 years, it wouldn't have made that much interest because I waited. Fast forward 25 years, because I'm in this mark now, if you would just put $2,000, a 9% return, that $2,000 right now would have over $160,000. And in 30 years, so if you're 18, you start investing when you're 18, at 48, you guys would have almost $300,000 versus waiting 10 years and only having $100,000. Yes. Would it be like a steady income where it just keeps you keep getting more, or would it be like you when you're retiring you just kind of take it all and then you gotta like you could do whatever you want. And once you're 65 and over, you can do whatever you want. And the great part of investing. So this is the opposite. When we go to a bank and we say, "Can I borrow money?" The bank says, "Sure, but I'm gonna charge you money and you're gonna pay me for that money that I'm gonna let you borrow." Investing is the opposite. This is me going to the bank and saying, I'm gonna let you guys borrow $2,000 of my money every year, but you guys are gonna pay me 9%. And your interest, so the first month at $2,000, 9%, say that made me like, let's just say $2,400, $2,500. Now I have $2,500, my $2,000 plus the $500 of interest I got. Now my $2,500 is gonna make money. And it's like a snowball, it just keeps growing and growing and more money that you're putting in, more interest they're paying you for letting them borrow your money. So you always wanna be the banker, right? You wanna be the one letting the bank borrow money. You don't want the bank letting, borrow, letting you borrow money because that's when you get into trouble. I know you guys are really young right now. I think you guys are probably anywhere from 14, right? 14 to like 17, okay. I know you're thinking this is just a long ways from now, but Seriously, when you guys start working, get a job, get a stable income, even if it's $10 a month that you can save, save something, start investing it. Because you guys don't want to work until you're old. You want to be able to say, hey, you know what? I want to retire in 10 more years, which will be 50 years old. I don't want to work until I'm 65. That's what California says. You could retire at 65. That, I don't want to be that person. I want to still be able to do stuff and not be sick and get on a plane and travel. That's my dream. 
So you have to think of what your dream is. What, what time do you want to retire? When do you want to retire? Are you going to want to have to work for the rest of your life until you, know, you pass away? That's not something we want to do, right? So think of this. I am very glad for that man that pushed me to, to save $50 a paycheck because he helped me throughout my years. So summary, obtain more personal finance education. Anytime that you're thinking of getting a loan, if you're thinking of buying anything from Amazon, from whatever, you think of buying, do your research, okay? Everyone knows what marketing is, right? I'm gonna use a really quick example. So you guys, McDonald's, when you guys were little, a lot younger, they had the Happy Meals. What color was McDonald's, inside McDonald's? What colors were they before? Yellow and red. And who was the character of McDonald's? Ronald McDonald. So guess who they're marketing? Who were they targeting? Kids. Why? What did they want to sell? Happy Meals. Why? Because it was $3.00 and the little toy only cost them about five cents to make and everything else was probably under a dollar and that's where their big money makers were. It was the Happy Meals. Okay, times have changed. Now you guys go to McDonald's, what colors are they? Anything. Brownish, you like cafe colors, right? Okay, what have they added on the menu they didn't have before? And they're, now they have Wi-Fi too, so you can go with your laptop to McDonald's, sit there, do, do your work. What are they selling now? What, is, what are they pushing for? No. They've had, always had breakfast. What did you say? No. Coffee. Don't they have frappuccinos now? And coffee and their colors now are like kind of coffee. They, it's actually McDonald's looks cool to go in. They have like the higher benches. They have Wi-Fi. So guess what their number one seller is? Coffee. And that's where they're making their most money. So now they change their whole scheme, and they're going to push their teenagers and college students to come in and buy coffee and buy food. But they're most, they're, where they're making the most money is coffee. So always question every purchase. Okay? I have a teenage daughter, I, and she just doesn't like me. I don't know why. She has, you know, this attitude. And I saw this commercial, and it's this mom baking cookies in the kitchen, and her daughter's coming down the stairs, running down the stairs. And when she's running down the stairs, the mom says, hey, come help me. We're going to make cookies together. So then it shows a picture of the mom and the daughter like throwing stuff at each other and ha laughing and having this good old time. And for a quick second, I thought, maybe if I go and have like a little big thing with my daughter, she'll like me again. And that's what it fed me. Me as an adult, I thought that for a quick second, I thought maybe if I do this with my daughter, she'll, we'll have a better relationship. So it doesn't, it's not just the teenagers, it's not just the kids. You guys always have to think, if someone's marketing, who are they marketing? Are they marketing me, my age group? And if they are, they're trying to sell you something. So always question every purchase, okay? Always question it. So if you guys have any further questions on your handout, there's more of what we talked about today. I'm going to go this one. Um, everything plus some more that we talked about today on the very back, it'll have, I'm sorry, in the very front, it'll have the balance information. You guys as teens can pick up your phone and say, hey, I have a question. I'm thinking of purchasing this item. I'm thinking of doing this. What are your thoughts? And they'll give you free financial advice. They don't have to take your name, your address, or anything like that. It's completely free. Do you guys have any questions for me? How many of you guys have a bank account right now? I have a bank account. Okay, that's awesome. Are you guys checking your statements and making sure no one's coming in? Perfect. And if you guys don't have a bank account, ask your parents to help you, to guide you in opening that for you. And if you say you don't have that option, go home and create three little places that you can put money away and say, this is going to be for my everyday expenses for Kona Ice on Friday or for the movies. This is going to be for that video game that I want. And this money is going to be for college or whatever you guys want to stay for. But start doing it now because if you don't, you won't have any money saved. So if you guys did not get a handout, we have some more up front and we have a little gift for you guys for being here as well. Thank you guys. Thank you.